All right, everyone, welcome back. It is time to go balls deep. And today we are going to discuss facts, trivia, and information you may not know about the Hyuga clan in Naruto. Now, of course, this is a long going series on the channel where we dissect every single thing about a character that we find interesting. So if you want us to cover another character, make sure to comment it below. We have covered Gara, Rock Lee, Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, Neji, Hinata, and many, many, many much more. So be sure to watch those videos after this one in our play playlist that I'll put in the pinned comment and without further ado, let's cue the intro. Before we begin, this video was made possible with NordVPN. Sign up with the link below using code ANIMEBALLSDEEP and you get 75% off and one month extra for free. NordVPN protects you online, kinda like a firewall or antivirus, and we do know you go on those dodgy websites right? Who are we kidding? We all do! On top of all of that, you can try this risk free because there is a 30 day money back guarantee, so why not try it? Use code ANIMEBALLSDEEP for 75% off. So as usual, let's start with the deeper meaning of the Hyuga name. So Hyuga itself means place in the sun, and it's also a city in the Miyazaki prefecture in Japan. It seems as though every member of the Hyuga clan that Kijimoto created associates with this meaning in a different way. For example, Neji's name is also a play on Nejia, an internal Chinese martial art that focuses on developing eternal chi through whirling and spinning techniques. And you guys get the idea, Neji's jutsu all revolve around this idea. Neji Jia actually incorporates yin yang theory with motions of the body being combined and coordinated with Chinese breathing techniques to develop eternal power for both offensive and defensive purposes. This actually relates back to the Hyuga clan as their clan martial law is more or less inspired from this. The clan at the time is even represented with the yin and yang symbol. Hinata's name in Japanese means a sunny place or a place in the sun. It can also be read as towards the sun. So a funny thing is that her name can be written with the same kanji as her family name Hyuga, which also means a place in the sun. So technically in English, her full name could be read as a place in the sun, a place in the sun. Who are you? You. No, not me, you. Yes, I am you. Just answer the damn questions. Who are you? I have told you. Are you deaf? No, you is blind. I'm not blind, you blind. That is what I just said. You just said what? I did not say what. I said you. That's what I'm asking you. And you is answering. Shut up. You. Yes? Not you here, but a unique thing to note is that the name Hyuga representing the sun is actually a direct representation of the Hyuga clan itself, as the sun causes an orbit which everything revolves around it, right? One of the secret clan's technique is the eight trigon palms revolving heaven, or in Japanese Hakosho Kaiten, where the word Kaiten literally means revolving heaven, similar to how everything revolves around the sun. Now the other members Hanabi means fireworks, Hayashi stands for daytime or position of the sun while meaning spreading of a fire, Aizashi means sunlight or rays of the sun. Now remember, if you want a bold deep analysis on this, watch the two separate videos we have created on Hinata and Neji in the pinned comment. Moving on to design, now did you know Neji's favourite phrase was flying leap and um, I think he took it quite too literally. I mean, why didn't he use eight trigon palms and deflect it? I believe I can fly. YOLO! Anyway, talking about design, let's discuss the symbol of the clan itself. The Hyuga clan symbol is a fan shape with a flame. The flame represents the will of fire, which was an underlying concept for the creation of the Konoha since it's the land of fire. The fan symbol represents the kindle to the fire which helps it grow and could also be seen as a hand. This is because the Hyuga clan is a fundamental part and a helping hand in Konoha which helps the flame grow. The clan is also known for the Byakugan, which translates to all seeing white eyes. The kanji for Byakugan can be broken down into two words, Shiromi and Hakugan. Both can mean white of the eyes when used as a noun. Kishimoto is a genius because the word used to describe dojutsu refers to the sclera. The sclera is known as the white of the eye. It is tough opaque outer layer of the eye that provides it with protection and structural integrity. Hmm, you know, isn't that what the Byakugan function is? 
A genius! And since we're on the topic of eyes by the way, it's actually the case that not all Hyuga unlock them and can use the Dojutsu to its full potential similar to the, how the Sharingan works. Some wielders of the Byakugan have to use hand seals to activate their ability for example, whilst others don't have to do this. Himawari Uzumaki is the youngest ever clan member to unlock the Byakugan at the age of 3. Some could also see larger distances than others whilst using this Dojutsu. Neji's last record which was was 800 meters before he died, Hinata's was a whopping 20 kilo meters. Also now that I have mentioned Hinata, Naruto's marriage to Hinata the princess had to be approved by her father, the head of the clan. Now we don't know for a fact if Naruto's marriage to Hinata is probably the first time a Hyuga main branch has married and procreated with a non Hyuga member. There is no confirmation for this but we do know the marriage needed approval by the clan. Furthermore, on the topic of Hinata by the way, we never ever see her mother's design in the manga at all. We actually don't know who she is and has she ever spoken. However, in Naruto Shippuden episode 166, we see Hinata and Hanabi's mother in a family photo. And finally, we all pretty much know this one, the cursed seal design that Hyuga have regarding the Byakugan was based on the Manji, a Hindu Buddhist symbol, right? Now this was originally in the manga. Now the Manji represents the harmonious interplay of the many opposites in life, heaven and earth, day and night. However, due to this easily being misinterpreted for you know what and I'm not going to say it because I don't want this video to get demonetized and flagged for no reason by YouTube, the anime then changed the design into an X for the seal. Moving on to the gentle fist. Now let's talk about one of the Hyuga clan's main signature techniques. Like we know that Uchiha have the fireball jutsu which nearly every single member of the clan are set to learn. What does the Hyuga clan have right? Well that could be the gentle fist. Amongst the other signature techniques the gentle fist is utilized by pretty much every member of the Hyuga clan. Now even though the name of the technique sounds ironic like what attack would you want to do to be considered gentle when the intent in the first places to kill the guy, <clears throat> well the gentle fist is actually meant to be gentle as all you need is a gentle tap to successfully execute the attack. This is because the attack itself isn't supposed to cause any outward physical damage per se, rather it is just a means to inflict internal damage by pushing a certain amount of their own chakra into the opponent's chakra pathway system causing damage to surrounding organs due to it being closely intertwined with the chakra circularity system. Now this technique can only really be used by a person with Byakugan as the targeted area needs to be precise. Byakugan users can see the chakra points so they don't need to guess where they are aiming at. With all of that explained, this fighting style is actually based on the real life Chinese martial art, I'm gonna butcher this so badly, the Bagua Zhang or in Japanese Hakusho. Uh, definitely butchered up. Sorry guys, I'm sorry. But this is a fighting style usually made up of circular movements, allowing the user a wide range of motion and full use of momentum without giving their opponent a chance to attack. Now these techniques have also been referred to as Jukenpo, the gentle fist art, or Juho, the gentle step. Now the gentle fist is also said to be based on the touch of death, where some of you might recall a form being used in the Kill Bill movies. This is actually a real thing where it's any lethal martial art technique that would end up killing the target with a non-lethal attack by striking certain pressure points on the body. The 8 trigon palm which is derived technique from the gentle fist as we explained, Kijimoto doesn't just randomly come up with these jutsu techniques fam, we are talking about a learned man. Kijimoto is a genius of course and he most definitely read up on pretty much everything. The 8 trigon palm technique is based off the concept of Bogua, which are the 8 symbols used in Taoist cosmology to represent the fundamental principles of reality seen as a range of 8 interlated concepts. Each consists of three lines and each line either broken or unbroken, respectively representing the yin or yang concept and now this is portrayed back into the anime as whenever the move is used we see an illustration of the Bagua diagram along with the yin and yang symbol showcased with Neji. Okay moving on to love and marriages, did you guys know that like most of the clans in the Naruto universe, the members would usually marry within their own family. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, we are talking about incest, and the Hugo clan isn't an exception. In fact, the Uchiha and Hugo clan are both more likely to follow this practice to pass on and keep their Keke Genkai within the clan. With that to know, if Neji would have survived the fourth war, more than likely, and he didn't sacrifice himself for Naruto, he would have followed the clan's principles. He would have been used as a proposal to marry his cousin Hanabi or another member of the clan. And if you remember, when Neji was a child, his introduction to Hinata proves this fact that his mindset of intermarriages within family was a common thought. When Neji sets his eyes on Hinata for the first time, or when they first met, I don't know, he tells his father that, oh my god, she looks nice, and she says she looks cute, in a way which would imply a relationship outside of something platonic. Now, this idea was even pushed in the Naruto Omar K when he admits he wishes to be better friends with Hinata and he gets all red in the face and he questions why his chest is pounding so fast when he's, whenever he's around Hinata and he says Hinata is getting cuter and cuter. This is also the main reason that the Hyuga clan have two branches in the first place because it keeps them from marrying their immediate relatives like brothers or sisters. Now Kijimoto actually took a lot of inspiration for the Keke Genkai from the Koga Ninja Scrolls which was much more explicit about the inbreeding. To that extent that most shinobi born with genetic abilities also had grotesque deformities and two principal clans at war with each other they were originally trying to unite through marriage to broaden their gene pool. And finally, let's talk about the Hugo affair. Now, I know a lot of you probably heard that term before, but you don't know what it's about. Don't worry, I'm going to break everything down for you guys. So let me know that you got to this point of the video by smashing that like button, as well as commenting below your favorite Hugo member out of everyone. I would really like to know, and I appreciate that support. And I want to know if people actually got to the end and they haven't fell asleep. Anyway, the Hugo affair takes place exactly three years after the birth of Hinata, as coincidentally, on her third birthday, a treaty between Konoha and Komogakure was agreed to be signed. This actually is around the time after the Third Shinobi World War. However, on the day of the signing, the head ninja of the village hidden by the cloud Komogakure, whose identity wasn't really revealed, was supposed to be an envoy present for signing the treaty. Instead, the head ninja thought it would be a good idea to kidnap Hinata in order to obtain the Byakugan and its secrets, ultimately strengthening Komogakure's potential. A quick reminder to you guys is that in order to reduce the probability of the Byakugan falling into enemy hands, the main house of the Hyuga clan and placed a cursed seal onto the foreheads of the branch house members, which seals away the Byakugan upon their death. But because Hinata is from the main branch and a young child, she became an easy target. Or you would think, right? Well, the shinobi who tried to kidnap her, yeah, he got killed by her father, Hayashi Hyuga. But the death of the Komogakure head ninja caused all kinds of trouble. Komogakure denied all of the accusations of the kidnapping and demanded the body of Hayashi as compensation for the death of the head ninja for the finalization of a treaty between the nations. Basically, if Konoha wanted peace, they would have to make this sacrifice, which they intended to fulfill. However, Hayashi Hyuga, who was Hayashi's twin brother, decided to take his brother's place as Komogakure wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The reasoning behind this is his decision was actually very smart. Besides saving the life of the head of the clan of Hyuga, Hayashi's cursed seal would seal his Byakugan upon his death, safeguarding his secrets of the Hyuga clan. His brother even told him not to do that, but Neji's father was a true martyr. He chose to do this on his own, not only for the clan and the village, but for his brother. Now that's true love. True love. <sighs> I wonder how that feels like, I'm joking. <laughs> However, we all know this event was the cornerstone for Neji's character, making him believe that everything revolves around the main house and the branch house are just tools to always support the main house Hyuga clan. This also pushed his ideology about destiny. Neji felt like a scrub and the only explanation he could think of was due to destiny. Destiny that his father Hayashi was born just a few seconds after his twin brother Hayashi and the only reason for Hayashi was made the successor of the Hyuga clan was because he was born earlier whereas Hayashi was made a member of the branch house and you know pretty much I agree that's freaking stupid. If you guys want us to make a video regarding if Naruto is a hypocrite was Neji right about destiny all along comment below that you want that video and I'll get it done.
Anyways, well done, you made it to this part of the video. Bonus time, bonus facts. So the Hyuga clan in Boruto, they've actually trained Boruto and Himawari. They are actually getting trained while they were young. And when they were first introduced, Hinata's children, of course, they were supposed to actually have the Byakugan since they are Hyuga descendants. But Masashi Kijimoto, he intended to give them this, but he forgot. So later on, he decided when he created the book, the Naruto became the Hokage for the first time, blah, 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 blah. He decided to give Himawari the Byakugan. But later on, Boruto got the pure eye as we know, and we don't know the full story behind that. And apparently, when Kijimoto was asked regarding Uchiha and Hyuga in breeding, he said that the child of the Uchiha and Hyuga parentage was supposedly be born with one Sharingan and one Byakugan. Now, we can't take this answer seriously because we know Kijimoto laughed at the end and he's kind of a troll sometimes, he has a playful personality, so take it for what it is. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed yourself, make sure to smash that like button, follow us on Instagram or Twitter with at Deep, and I'll see you guys next time.